Hey everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I am going to be decoding knotting for you. But to understand why do we need to knot, we need to understand the problem first. So the problem is that when IPv4 was created, this internet came into existence. It was never thought that it will become this big. And the 32-bit address size, which was about 4.2 billion addresses, was thought to be more than enough to suffice each and every user. Almost 30 years later, this IPv4 is now exhausted. But there are 4.3 billion unique addresses. How can they get exhausted? Well, consider this. Almost 600 million IPs are either reserved or cannot be used. These are private address spaces, multicast reserved spaces, loopback addresses that cannot be used in everyday networking. Yes, some of them can be used for internal networking, but they cannot be used as a public IP address. Then there are our ISPs and TSP who provide us with the internet. They need to use these public IP addresses for some of their components, for some of the infrastructure, like the servers, like the routers, which are our gateways. So not all IPs are only for clients. And consider this, in January 2021, there were 4.66 billion unique people using the internet. And not all of them have just one device. They have their laptops, they have their phones, they have their iPads. So there are multiple devices and each device needs to have a unique address to interact with the internet. So to overcome this problem of IPv4, there have been multiple solutions that have been proposed. And they are, many of them are in action also. So one of the first was to reclaim any unused IPv4 space. So IPv4 is allocated by an RIR, that is a regional internet registry. So RIRs have allocated a lot of IPv4 to a lot of people over the years but not all of them had been used. So when these IPv4 were getting exhausted, what RIRs has started to do was any unused IPv4 space that they could find from an organization or the organization was defunct, those spaces were started to reclaim and reallocate them to the other companies. The other idea proposed was CIDR, that is classless interdomain routing. As you know, IPv4 had been given classes, class A, B, and C. But allocating space based on class was not fruitful. So someone was to allocate class A, they were almost giving away 16 million addresses. But 16 million addresses just for single organization doesn't make any sense. So a classless subnetting was introduced. That is why now we have slash 24, slash 25, and slash 26 types of subnets available even in class A, even in class B. This is because of CIDR. The other solution proposed was IPv6. Now IPv6 to the rescue had 128-bit addressing. That is 340 unidecillion addresses. That's a lot of addresses. But adoption of IPv6 has not been simple. There are legacy devices in our networks which cannot be upgraded or which cannot be rolled over to IPv6 alone. So IPv4 will coexist with IPv6 even if the adoption is sped up, but IPv4 will exist. It is not going anywhere anytime soon. And the last and the most important solution was NATing. So what is NATing? NATing is network address translation. So it goes two ways. Translation of a source address when it's leaving a LAN area to the internet and translation of destination address when it is coming back from WAN to, the, to our LAN. So network address translation is of two types, that is source NAT and destination NAT. So let's understand what is source NAT first. This is what our IPv4 packet looks like. We are only concerned about our source address and destination address here. So a IPv4 packet is delivered because it has a source address that is the originating address and a destination address. In source snatting, the source address gets translated. So let's focus and let's see how this happens. So let's see the working, how the source snat takes place. On the left, we have our LAN network that is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. 
and on the right we have our WAN network that is 202.18.6.0 slash 24. So not normally WAN network will be like this of slash 24 but this is just an example so that you understand. So the client setting on 192.168.1.1 will go through router 192.168.1.254 whose WAN interface is 202.18.6.254 to reach the server 202.18.6.18. So when the client sends the packet to the router, the source address of that packet is 192.168.1.1 and the destination is the server that is 202.18.6.18. Now router does something here. Router translates or changes the source address to its WAN address that is 202.18.6.254. Why is that? The reason behind that is that the internet doesn't understand 192.168.1.0/24. The internet basically does not understand the private IP space. Internet only understands the public IP space, that is the public IP addresses. So for the client to communicate to the server, the source address of the client while sending the packet out has to be changed. And this change of the source address is kept in the router memory because when the packet comes back from the server to the router, the router knows where to forward this packet to which client had requested this packet. The change of source address of the packet is known as source natting. So there are multiple strategies available in Mikrotech routers to do source natting. The first and the simplest is source nat. So there are multiple ways available in Mikrotech routers that we can use to do source natting. The first is source nat, SRC nat. So when you come to your router and so when you come to the action of your nat rules, under the action tab, you see SRC nat. The two address, you can specify any address that is available on your router. And uh, this any address, don't specify any address. This has to be an IP address or four octets. So you can specify the IP address that is available on your router to which the public IP space can communicate with so the packet can be translated when sending outside and when the packet comes back to this IP address it can get retranslated back by the router which has stored this information. So SourceNAT is the most basic thing and this can be used not just for an IP address but for a range of IP address also so 192.168.1.0/24 and it can be used with a source address list that you have made so any private ip so all the private ips here like i have created an address list with a private ip list that is for all 10 series 172.16.00/12 192.168.00/16 so all the ip address can be translated but all the clients under all these addresses will have the same IP address that you have mentioned in your action statement. This is the two address. Next up is NetMap. NetMap creates a static one is to one mapping of one set of IP addresses to another set of IP addresses. The point to note here is that the net mask will remain the same. That means you can NetMap a slash 24 private IP address range to a slash 28 public IP address range. How the logic for it works, I'll tell you in a bit. First, let's see the configuration of it. So in the configuration in NAT configuration, under the action, we'll select NetMap and the two address here will be 103.103.103.0 slash 28. And we can have chain as source NAT, source address being 192.161.0 slash 24. I'm assuming that 103.103.103 .103 here is a public IP space. So what NetMap will going to do is assign one IP address from the space to one IP address of the private IP space. So the private IP going to the internet will have the same IP address every time they go out. But how does the logic for this work? To make you understand, I made this Excel worksheet. So here we had a slash 28 IP pool. The slash 28 IP pool means that the 28 bits are fixed. So this is the same logic with which it will work. 
That means the first 16 IP addresses of the private space will use the 16 IP addresses of the slash 28 public IP space. So that means that they will use 103.103.103.0, then 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth up till the last IP of the series being 103.103.103.15. So this is the address space with which the customers will go on the internet. So this is the IP private IP space and this is going to be the public IP space. After 15, this sequence is going to repeat again and again and again. So this is how the public IP address will be assigned to the private IP space. So next is same. In same action, the public IP address space is going to be allocated in a round robin fashion per connection. That means a connection from client 1 to a web server 1 will be connection 1. Client 1 to web server 2 will be connection 2. So every time the client will go to web server 1, they'll use the same public IP address from that range. And when they'll go to web server 2, they're going to use a different public IP address, but the same IP address that they used for the first time when connecting to web server 2. So same is configured in the same way. In action, we do same. There's not much difference in it. Again, you will have to appoint the IP addresses that you want to allocate for your customers here in two address and you have to define which IP addresses are you going to source that. The last is Masquerade. Masquerade is very similar to SRC NAT. But the only difference is in SRC NAT, we specify the public IP address that we are going to use while going out. But in Masquerade, what we are going to use is the WAN IP address on the router. So whatever the WAN IP address is on the router is going to be used to masquerade our private IP space. To configure masquerade, we choose the action masquerade. In this, we don't have to give any address because it will use the address of the public IP interface that is on the router or the out interface of the router. So here we are assuming that the out interface has a public IP on it on which the users will be masqueraded to. So next is destination NAT. Again, we are only concerned with the source and the destination IP addresses in our IPv4 header. And in destination NAT address, we are mainly concerned with the destination address as the destination address is going to be changed or translated here. So the destination NAT is also referred to as port forwarding or DMZ, which is a demilitarized zone. So we'll understand both of these terms Let's look at the scenario first. So on the left, we have our LAN side. That is, we have a web server that is on 192.168.1.1, which is running a web server on port 8080. And on the WAN side, we have a client setting on 202.18.6.18, who wants to request the website from this web server, but is going to connect at port 80. So here we are going to do two things. We are going to translate the destination IP address and the destination port. So user sitting at 202.18.6.18 is requesting a web server on the WAN interface of the router. Note that there is no web server running on the router. So what router does is router changes the destination address as well as the destination port and it forwards the packet to the web server. Now web server responds back to the client and the source address in this case is going to be 192.168.1.1 double colon 8080 that is the web server it is responding to the client now and what router does is when it receives such messages it again translates the message the source message this time around when replying back to the client. So this kind of scenario is known as port forwarding where the client who is requesting the port at 80 is forwarded to another port on port 8080 at the server for the server and 
The DMZ refers to the fact that it is a demilitarized zone. So the WAN interface of the router is like the public interface of the server. Everything that hits the WAN interface of the router is forwarded as is on the same port to the server. So let's look at this in action. So on the left we have a web server whose IP address is 192.168.1.1 and on the right we have a client who is on the public interface with IP address 202.18.6.18. So the client is going to get a web page from 202.18.6.254 that is the WAN interface of the router. So let's look at the configuration first. So this is the web server that is running and uh, the web server has an IP address of 192.168.1.1 and I'm just running a simple server on uh, Python and this is the client that is running and it has an IP address of 202.18.6.18 so let's look at the configuration on our router now. So our router is running a DHCP server on Ether1 and Ether2. And on Ether1, it's giving just a single IP of 192.168.1.1. That is for our web server. And on Ether2, it's giving a simple IP address of 202.18.6.18, which is our client. So what we are saying here is if there is something destined for 202.18.6.254, destination port being 80 and protocol being TCP translate that destination address to 192.168.1.1 to port 8080 so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enable system logging and I'm going to add a topic firewall and action is going to be echo so what I want to basically do is anytime there is a connection made uh, I just want to log it on the screen so that we don't have to print the system logs. Uh, we just wanted to print it on the screen. So from our client end, this is this end. Let's try to connect to the server, the web server here. So we're going to connect to HTTP 202.18.6.254. And we are not going to give any port here. We are connecting to the default HTTP port that is port 80. So we get that hello world I am 192.168.1.1 hidden behind the NAT router. So let's go to our router. So in our router what we see is that 202.18.6.18 from port 57296 had tried to access 202.18.6.254 on port 80. Now this is our router's IP address and it is the HTTP port that the client has tried to hit. So if we go to a web server now, we see that there has been a request that has come from 202.18.6.18 and it has tried to get the HTTP page and the page was successfully given because the status code is 200. So this is how the destination NAT that is the port forwarding on Microtech takes place. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you were able to understand what is NATing, what is source NAT and what is destination NAT and how to configure port forwarding in Microtech routers. Do let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you like the video, please press the like button. Please do subscribe to my channel to get the latest updates. And until we see the next time, goodbye.